I'm very pleased to address uh, this audience of such distinguished guests from the World Jewish Congress, and I'm honored to talk to you and express the friendship and closeness of the Italian government with the Jewish people. And uh, I hope uh, you will enjoy your stay in Rome. Dear friends, I will start recalling a great Jew and a great Italian who, who died recently at the age of almost uh, 100 years old, the former Chief Rabbi of Rome, Eliot Waff. And uh, he fought against the indignity of racial laws, which since 1938 have been a source of perennial shame to our country, then committed himself to the liberation of Italy from Nazi fascism and was among the protagonists of the reconstruction in post-war Italy. He has lived in the service of our country and of our own future. Elliot Waff was an unsurpassable example of involvement in interreligious dialogue, intended not as a matter of diplomatic relations between different faiths, but as a natural dimension of spirituality and of coexistence of different identities. The city of Rome, with its unique history, surely embodies this dimension. Tomorrow, Pope, Pope Francesco will receive you all for the 15th anniversary of the Nostra Etate Declaration. This anniversary is a valuable opportunity to think about the importance of interfaith dialogue, and in particular, on the relationship between Christianity and Judaism, and on the progress made since the historic declaration of the Second Vatican Council. We still remember the image of John Paul II visiting the great synagogue of Rome in 1986. Italian government fully supported women and men around the world working towards peace in Jerusalem. Asking for peace in Jerusalem means building peace for us, for our brothers and for our friends. The Italian government's position on peace building in Israel hasn't changed it. And it's not for me tonight to remind you our foreign policy in the Middle East. For Italy, as for the European Union, peace comes from the affirmation of the principle of the right of the people of Israel to live in freedom and security in their own state. And as our Prime Minister has recently <laughs> And uh, as our Prime Minister, Matteo Renzi, has recently said, visiting Knesset, the Australian Parliament, if someone in the world today tries to put into doubt the right of Israel to exist, it's clear for me that uh, you don't just have the right to exist but you also have the duty to exist and to resist. And we'll stand side by side with you in this challenge. Building peace means not only combating the barbarity of terrorism in the name of freedom and security in Israel, as in Europe, in the United States, Russia, North Africa, and all over the world, but also to be engaged in a cultural challenge. Jewish culture is a part of European cultural roots. For this reason, the struggle against anti-Semitism and all forms of discrimination against Jews is not only an act of respect and admiration towards your culture and your nation, but the founding principle of Europe and also of Italy. In 1938, the approval of the racial laws was, and still remains, a source of deep shame for our country. But now, Italy is at the forefront in the fight against anti-Semitism. During these days, 
the Italian Parliament is discussing a bill against Holocaust denial, a bill that imposes harder penalties against those who instigate racial hatred by denying the Shoah. However, if the struggle against anti-Semitism is primarily a cultural challenge, then education is even more important than criminal laws. For this reason, in Italian schools, our teachers are fully committed to making sure young people are fully aware of the terrible reality of the Holocaust. Every year, on the occasion of Holocaust Memorial Day on the 27th of January, ceremonies, meetings, and moments of narration on the facts and reflection are diffusely organized, especially in schools. Furthermore, in 2014, during the Italian EU presidency, Italy has promoted for the first time the European Symposium on Education of the Holocaust, aimed at establishing an European teaching network on Shoah education, engaged in the promotion of Holocaust remembrance, because, as Primo Levi wrote, if understanding is impossible, retelling this story is necessary. Antisemitism can be defined as the most terrible and tangible expression of deeply rooted hate and persecution of human beings that history has ever produced. The fight against it is an intergenerational responsibility. Engagement for the respect of human dignity has no geographic or time boundaries. Politics and institutions must be renewed. Basic values which inspire politicians and characterize institutions must continue to do so. We shall always be aware of that. And even more so today, when witnesses of the Second World War and of the Holocaust are becoming more rare and even more precious. I always admire the extraordinary education work that many of them continue to deliver in schools, at public meetings and conferences, they are an example of civic courage and of active citizenship in cultivating the memory of the Shoah, in fostering an active and informed engagement with that memory, in giving messages and teachings essential to building a better future. To build a better future, some people have felt the duty to remember, even if it would be less painful to forget. And, uh, it is a sacrifice and a service for all our community in Italy and in Europe, and for which we should be always thankful. <laughs> Knowledge is also necessary to educate young generations and our societies to address the epochal phenomenon of migration, the never-ending drama of refugees Italy is at the forefront of rescue, and thanks to the efforts of many associations of religious inspiration, including several Jewish organizations, it is also engaged in welcoming and assisting refugees. Italy is fighting so that Europe will never forget the terrible lessons of its long history and will not turn its back on these women, these men, these children, until the confident assertion of Elio Toav comes true. Of course, he once said, the sacrifice of those millions of deaths has atoned for the sins of a world plunged into violence and racist madness, rekindling in men a sense of justice, morality, and the divine, inducing them to see again in the neighbor the image of God, the respect to honor, to love. Just a few days ago, we remembered the terrible razzia liquidation on the 16th of October 1943 in the Roman ghetto, and deportation of so many Jewish citizens of Rome to the Nazi concentration camps in Germany. It has been a further opportunity to underline the need to keep up our guard and react against any form of denialism and revisionism. This includes some misuse of the web to spread anti-Semitic ideology a total rejection of anti-Semitism in all its ideological guises remains a core value of our democratic culture. But also the Italian president, Sergio Mattarella, giving his first speech in parliament 
as remembered also the October 1982 terrorist attack on the Rome synagogue when little Stefano Taché, only two years old, died. <laughs> the president wanted not to forget him as an Italian little boy to testify the importance of the relation between our cultures. I would therefore conclude this brief address by reiterating that the Italian government, as stated in the motion approved by the Chamber of Deputies in February, is moved by the profound conviction that today, more than ever, in the face of the resurgence of anti-Semitism and attacks against Jewish targets in many European countries, all women and men of goodwill must work to ensure to Europe is more and more in, and is widely considered to be the home of Jews. Thank you.